I am Shanti Swarup. Uh, I I started my career as a teacher, but now I am into uh, counseling, into child psychology. So I am a child psychologist by profession, and I am specialized in positive discipline. So I'll be the facilitator for today. Okay, let me let me share with you when we went into schools and um, at the grassroots level in the classroom when we uh, spoke to teachers. These are the major uh, concerns that uh, teachers uh, shared with us. Okay, I don't know how many of you resonated with this, but I'm just sharing with that. So um, because this is where we started actually. Okay, so when we went into schools um, and when we spoke to teachers, yes, you know what are the what are the major challenges that you are facing, especially in this area of discipline, especially in disciplining students. Uh, these are the most of major concerns that teachers shared. Most of the teachers said that, sir. you know the problem is with the parents actually you know like if you have to design a program you design a program for them not for us you know it's because parents they are kind of uh, very much uh, uh, the pampering their children a lot when they are pampering their children and children they it's it the burden is on us in the classroom and we are not able to handle those kids those kids who are not even ready to take a no so parents are the issue that's what most of the uh teachers uh, uh shared you know shared their uh, concerns and um, and some of some teachers shared that sir you know we are kind of very much bogged up with our own uh, syllabus and handling these many kids when a lot of stuff there are a lot of things to to take care lot many things are there on our head and we don't have much time you know if you if you had time you would have sat with the child aram se we spoke with the child okay the child is not doing homework even after telling 10 times you would have aram se sat with the child and spoke to the child very nice and kind would have would have done something but we literally don't have that much time we are kind of pressurized this is one more concern this is one more concern uh, teachers actually shared with us when we went into classrooms and when we um, spoke to uh, teachers and some teachers share that sir you know yes Uh, disciplining without yelling or without pleading without much of punishment we tried but it did not work actually it's it's kind of it, it did not work why because students you know these days they are unmanageable students are unmanageable the influence that they have on them the social media influence from the society whatever is falling on them that influence is very high the the student that's why students are becoming very much unmanageable it it is not easy it is not easy and that's what uh, some of the uh, teachers they shared their uh, concerns uh, uh, concerns with us and some teachers said that you know even if you are people say that we need we should not punish and all that stuff but we don't know exactly how to do that okay some teachers shared that we don't have these uh, skills and uh, some of some teachers very categorically categorically stated that sir you know ye, th this is not practical actually children won't listen without punishment you know that is required that's that's some of the teachers shared their views and uh, it's not necessary that you know you you have all these concerns but i'm pretty much sure that you would connect to some of these concerns concerns that teachers shared with us and some teachers shared that it's you know, our 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 in our school especially our colleagues and management is not that supportive even if we want to uh, you know do something different in this area of uh, discipline and uh, the major concern you know this last one is a major concern that i i i got from teachers you know you know what teacher said is the major indiscipline that is happening is because because of this no punishment policy see this no punishment policy has come into schools and the management say that you cannot punish the child that's absolutely fine but what to do you know when the, even i i tell ch children i instruct children 100 times still the child does the same thing i tell them 100 times still the child doesn't do that homework or doesn't finish that uh, uh, assignment you know what to do this is this is one concern uh, um, that a teacher shared with me who is from maharashtra okay a teacher from maharashtra shared this concern i am just sharing the same thing to you so that teacher said is sir okay fine you know you are saying that the policy says that we should not punish that's absolutely fine so i do not know what else to do so what i started doing is when some issue is coming up because i am not supposed to do anything there you know i am simply sending the child to the counselor okay now go go and deal that with the counselor or go to the principal room so some issues happening i not able to deal sending them to the principal go to the principal room or go to the counselor this is what i was doing 
so you know what happened sir you know what happened is students they they developed this attitude that at the most what can you do you know at the most what can you do you can send me to the principal room okay fine no problem you can send me to the counselor fine no problem i'll go there i'll talk to them and come back so this uh, this kind of attitude i have seen in in um, students and i'm literally feeling helpless we i'm literally feeling helpless and kind of uh, drained and disgraced also this is what one of the teachers uh, from mumbai she shared with me how, uh, how many of you really resonate with this concerns uh, of of that you know that you could uh, see that you could see on the on the screen this is where we started we started with this this question like is it possible is it possible to discipline actually students without yelling or shouting or pleading in spite of this no punishment policy being in the school in spite of parents not cooperating in spite of you know our our uh, um, we don't have much time here the, the restriction in time in spite of lacking in skills what can we do actually we of course these are the concerns of course these are the challenges but what can be done to actually achieve this task of disciplining without pleading or without yelling so one one thing one thing that we understood one thing that that we understood is it is not simply because of the no punishment policy it's it's like you know the problem the actual problem is when you are asking teachers not to punish when punishment is removed okay then you should give something to the teachers if the child is coming late to the class you do this okay if the child is not finishing the ta task you do this okay if the child is hitting somebody you do this okay if the child is bullying somebody you do this if if this method is removed you should give alternative methods right you know these alternative methods are missing that is a major gap that we found is is happening just simply said that okay teachers fine we should not go with lot of punishment no punishment policy that's fine fantastic but the students are indisciplined the students they have their own shortcomings students are misbehaving what to do what are the alternative methods to punishment these are not given teachers are not equipped with alternative methods and this is a huge gap that we have seen in the classrooms i don't know am i making sense or not if i am making sense type yes in the chat box so what we have come up is if teachers need to establish discipline in spite of all these challenges and concerns that we have discussed just now teachers need specific research based time tested tools which they can use in the classroom they 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 need this all tool means method a way okay a child has uh, is very much disrespectful a disrespectful to the teacher what to do you know the teacher should have one two three methods one two three methods where the teacher can pick it up go and use it if at all if we could come up with such methods such tools then we can really help teachers in reality we can do something in reality we can help teachers we have come up with a toolkit we have come up with a toolkit uh, for teachers you know specific toolkit where we give 27 specific tools which we call as positive discipline toolkit okay where which is very much specific a teacher can just take these tools that means ideas and walk into the classroom and then use these tools for whatever uh, in discipline that they face and gain cooperation so use this and gain cooperation we have come up with this positive discipline toolkit okay and uh, this program this uh, two hour session what you have joined now it is an introductory program where i'll introduce you to this toolkit i will also share uh, some tools with you today i'll also share uh, what are the basis what are the really problems we'll we'll really uh, address uh, major questions let me let me start with the with this uh, introduction we'll we'll answer we'll try to answer major questions okay why children don't listen why the disciplinary challenges are intensifying day by day and year after year if at all if you feel that the disciplinary disciplinary challenges are intensifying why let us try to figure it out and how can we uh, gain cooperation from a child you know how to turn a resisting child into a cooperative child okay so i'll try to answer these three uh, major questions where i'll try to connect these tools pick up these tools from the toolkit 
and try to connect these tools and demonstrate to you to you if at all if you really feel that yes this is something valid and yes if you want to grab this toolkit yes you can you can get it uh, at an offer price at the end of this webinar let me uh, let me let me start with this uh, simple uh, question uh, what are the usual disciplinary measures that teachers use in the classroom not you not you i'm just asking in general in general what are the usual disciplinary measures uh, disciplinary methods i can say disciplinary methods teachers use in the class uh, most of you said that raising voice raising voice raising voice is a very 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 very, very common uh, thing you know it's yelling is a very common thing let me take that one method and you know let us see what happens and you know uh, let's see that so yelling why do we yell actually uh, to gain attention class is out of control to bring class in control to finish the syllabus to make that person to uh, do a certain thing that's why yell i'm pretty much sure i'm i i can say i can vouch for you i worked as a teacher for so many years we we don't derive any pleasure in yelling or punishing actually none of us we don't de derive hame maza nahi aata we don't derive any pleasure in fact most of us we feel guilty later after going home but why do we yell our only objective our only objective is to correct the child we really want to deep down we really want to correct the child that's why we yell yes or no so let us let us uh, let us do a small uh, role play kind of thing and let us try to understand this okay so imagine that you are a student and i am a teacher okay and uh, you came late to the classroom uh, 125th time you know i told you you know all you know come on time come on time come on time and still you are late and i had to finish the syllabus i started that i finished uh, uh, some of the notes and then you came that really pissed me off you know as someone told that i reached that breaking point for the sake of role play let me exaggerate if at all uh, if you are watching your on phone you know like you can reduce the volume <clears throat> you know i'm getting <laughs> getting ready to to uh, for the role play okay right yes you, you, you are late to the class again now how many times how many times you do that you know don't you have this simple common sense when, when is a, when does the school start when you should come and what is the time right now you know don't, don't you have that simple common sense like now how the class is finished half of the lesson is finished and you are here right now what to do how will you understand this you are you will get you will take the notes of somebody and you start copying with somebody you know i i'm 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 really really pissed off with you and i, I don't want to see you here now out out get out of here get out of my class go to the principal go to the principal and go to the counselor i don't want to see your face here out out of my class out here something something of this kind happens in the classroom when we wanted to correct a child n number of times and the child still does the same thing as a student you know as a child uh, how many of you you felt you felt that this teacher is actually trying to uh, correct me this teacher is actually trying to put me on the uh, right path and i'm not trying to uh, correct me and i i cannot wait to come and share all my concerns to this uh, very uh, encouraging teachers how many of you felt that you know as a child how many of you felt that that this teacher is actually trying to help me this teacher is actually trying to correct me none of you none of you have felt that you know this teacher is actually trying to correct me but what is my objective my objective is to correct you yes or no that is why i am yelling my objective is to correct you stop that um, you know that late coming behavior that is my objective but when i take this approach none of the child no child will feel no child will feel that this teacher is actually correcting me this teacher is actually putting me on the right path nobody feels like that yes or no you are yelling to correct a child child doesn't feel that you are correcting so why are we yelling this is something to think about right yes see we need to correct a child correction is very much required discipline is very much required in the classroom even in your home correction is very much required but before uh, correcting we need to connect to the child connect before you correct that is what adlerian psychology talks about you know go back and then revisit uh, uh, the um, situation where you try to correct a child where you try to correct a child and how many of you feel that yes i was correcting a child i was correcting a child but somehow this connection part is missing how many of you feel like that 99% of the teachers they miss 
connecting this is where this is where we need to we need to uh, work the usual methods teachers use they used to correct a child but the methods don't correct but on the other side those methods intensify the challenges the first huge gap that i we see in the classroom is most of the teachers they are directly jumping into correcting without connecting without connecting uh, to the child this connect before you correct is a one thing that i want you to uh, focus on there are there are different ways of connecting it's not it's not one way you can how can you know physically how you uh, stand uh, beside a child how you speak uh, how you understand a child mental level of connection getting into their shoes emotionally connecting to the child so we have put together almost more than 15 tools 15 specific tools to connect where a teacher can pick it up and walk into the classroom and connect to the child before correcting. That is where our toolkit actually helps uh, teachers. How many of you think that you need to have these tools? You know, having these tools to connect is important. The child is rude. Okay, fine. How can I connect to the child in this uh, situation? Okay. The child is running here and there in the classroom. Okay. I told the child to sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. 100 times the child is not sitting. How can I connect to the child? If you have specific tools, then only, only then there is a possibility for you to really establish that so-called, whatever you're talking that, you know, the so-called positive discipline, discipline without yelling or pleading. Okay. This discipline without blame, shame and pain. First it is connection. Okay. Then it is correction. Okay. So let me go back. Let me go to the correction part now. How can we correct? What are the different tools that we have to Correct. Okay. Shall we let, let us jump into the correction part. All of you ready? And let us dive deeper and understand our challenges and connect one tool. Let us take one tool and try to uh, uh, connect here. Like one tool of correction and try to connect to our challenges. Okay. We'll dive deeper. Uh, let us let us uh, start with um, um, one uh, one simple activity. Okay. If you are if you are really serious, if you really if you are really serious, if you want to know learn this concept and uh, learn these tools i want you to do this okay do this uh, along with me take a piece of paper take a piece of paper and make two columns to your left write down challenges to your left write down challenges to your right write down characteristics and life skills <clears throat> in that what 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 you see on the screen okay whatever you see on the screen now think about all the major disciplinary challenges that you are facing in the classroom as a teacher and write it down on the left side column okay write it on the left side column after writing as a teacher you can also write as a parent also you can you know shift that take out that this hat hat of a teacher and put a hat of parent and write down as a parent because the tools uh, you can connect it you know, both ways because we are talking about children as a teacher or as a parent hitting hitting in the classroom argument Hyper child, always talking, classmates, are fighting, lack of attention, distracted, talkative, work sh shirking, they don't want to work actually, uh, useless uh, uh, talking, don't bring art materials, they don't bring materials in the, the class, okay, ignoring teacher's instruction, they're not paying attention, uh, adamant, uh, lack of concentration, not completing work, don't follow interest, hitting, pushing, hitting, fighting, careless attitude, uh, not listening, sleeping, laughing, arguing, fighting. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, if, you, if you continue that, we feel depressed. So let us stop. Let us stop those challenges. We have so many challenges. Yes, yes, yes. Both it, both it. We have so many challenges. Okay. So for a moment, for a moment, uh, let us stop uh, thinking about these challenges and let us shift our attention to the right set column. So what is it? What is this? Imagine that, you know, you have access to a time machine. And you got into a time machine you went into future some 10 to 15 years in the future so your own students they have grown up now or as a parent you can also think your own children they have grown up now so when you see that grown-up child what kind of skills you want that child to acquire skills okay what kind of qualities you want that child to really you know imbibe what kind of values you want that child to follow okay skills qualities values what are the skills and qualities values that you want to see in your own children or in your students when they grow up okay this is the question think about these three things and write your answers in the right side column in the right side column responsibility good citizen respectful perseverance 
Ravira says perseverance and Gudia says uh, I missed it. Okay. Life skills. Yeah. What are the life skills? Respect. Yeah. Value for others. Uh, uh, skill in their field. Independent. Discipline. Respect. Uh, empathy. Okay. Responsible. Socializing skills. Uh, leadership qualities. Dr. Priya says. Okay. Uh, communication skills and interpersonal skills. That's what Dr. Priya says. Innovative ideas. As I can't take all your inputs, you know, I've put I've put these things on the screen here. These usually the teachers uh, give these responses. Children won't listen. They back talk. You know, they are back talk. Lack of motivation. Use foul language. Interrupting. You know, fighting. Bedtime hassles as a parent. You know, morning hassles as a parent and stealing, cheating, fighting, temper tantrums, media addiction. Usually, you know, parents give these comments here. And when I asked about the life skills. This is what the regular um, uh, comments that I get uh, from teachers. Self-discipline, responsibility, desire to cooperate and contribute, communication skill, problem-solving skill, sense of humor, flexibility, respect for others, compassion, social consciousness. Usually these are, these are the responses that I get. Uh, do you feel that, you know, whatever I have shared here on the screen, is it kind of uh, resonating to whatever you have uh, written? Is it resembling to whatever you have written? The moment we see this chart you have written these challenges and this life scale we you know this this one thing is very much striking that there is a huge gap between our present and our future the challenges that we are facing is our present and in the future we want the child to you know have these skills and uh, values and there is a huge gap between our present and our future. The next question that comes to my mind is, think about it. Is it possible to bridge this gap? Is it possible to bridge this gap to reduce these challenges and develop these values and skills? If at all, if this is possible, if, you, if, if your answer is yes, how is the next question? If at all, if at all, if we could reduce these challenges, and develop these values and skills in children, how valuable that would be, you know, how valuable that would be. If you could achieve this with your students or with your own children as a parent, how valuable that is for you. Uh, let me share one more thing. And uh, I don't know how many of you would really uh, accept with me. Whatever challenges that you have mentioned till now, okay. 80 to 90 percent most of the challenges are connected to this one challenge one challenge that children won't listen that means children won't obey the child is running here and there you tell the child that sit in one place the child won't obey you want the child to you know speak talk to you respectfully the child won't obey you want the child to come on time the child won't obey you want the child to finish the classwork the child won't obey more or less most of the challenges that you have shared are connected to this one challenge that children won't listen, children won't obey. Am I right or wrong? You know, am, am I right? So let us take this one challenge and let's start working uh, and let us use a tool. What are from my toolkit? Let us use a tool and let us see how we can uh, work on this. So uh, let, let us take this one challenge and let's start uh, working again. Let me do a role play here. So here I'll be speaking something. When I when I'm speaking here, you just you it's again role play where I'm a teacher. I'll be role playing as a teacher. I'll be communicating to you, and you you be a student. When I say you be a student, don't think how your student uh, answers, and you know you try to answer that. I don't want that. Now you are a student. Now I'm a teacher. Now I'm communicating to you in a particular way. Now what are you? thinking what are you feeling what are you feeling inside that is that response you give in the chat box as simple as that it's time to clean up the room activity time is over it's not okay to hit your friends say sorry when i'm saying this what are you thinking what are you feeling what are you deciding you want to obey or you don't want that you just mentally make a note and let me know that's all okay so i'm coming in it's time to clean up the room activity time is over it's not okay to hit your friend. Say sorry. No complaint. No complaint. Stop fighting. Or else I have to take you to the principal's room. If you don't get your work done, then you will stay back during the game period and get it done. I'm telling you. No talking with your friends when the class is going on. 
stop crying so when i'm when i'm talking to you like that you know as a teacher what are you uh, thinking or what are you feeling feeling good or bad feeling good or bad so most of you are saying no okay great okay so when i'm talking to you like that do you want to obey or not you want to obey or not yes or no when i'm um, i'm talking to you like that you know stop crying and stop complaining uh, if you don't get your work then you have to sit here and finish the work um, and during your game spread you have to finish and this work and go activity is finished clean the room when i'm talking to you like that how many of you feel that uh, do you really feel that any of these qualities are being developed in you desire to cooperate and contribute problem solving skill okay uh, respect for others and compassion are this any of these qualities are being developed in you type yes or no in the chat box no 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 okay okay so none of these qualities skills are being developed in you fine let me move to the left hand side when i was speaking to you like that when i was communicating to you like that uh, were you motivated to do any of the any of this uh, motivated to engage in any of these challenges that means you wanted to do any of these things you don't want to listen you want to back talk okay interrupt lie you wanted to do any of these things when i was speaking like that when i was communicating to you like that most of you said that you don't want to obey you don't want to listen to me none of these uh, these qualities and skills are uh, developing but you know you want to do this you don't want to listen to me you want to do this okay some of you might back talk if you have that courage some of you lie you might uh, you know engage in these things yes that is what it is that is what i have understood from your comments so now let us let us uh, do this role play again and let us see let let me change my uh, conversation my communication i am a teacher and you are a student again this time let uh, let's see what happens and then let's go ahead okay let us start the role play again okay what do we do after the activity is done how can we keep this room neat how do we treat our friends how can you share your concerns so that so that others would like to hear how can you and your friend solve this problem what do you need to do to get your work done without having to stay back in class during your game period when is the best time to discuss ideas or ask each other questions how can you talk and say what happened so that i can understand what you want uh what are you thinking what are you thinking feeling feeling good or bad if it is good type g okay feeling good or bad okay this time feeling is good okay that you can clearly see that better feeling okay feeling it's like making the child to think what is to be done and what is right yes yes this time good for students thought process activities involving students you know that's what you say this time you are feeling good okay so this time when i'm speaking to you like that as a teacher this time let me come back to that this two list that you have written um now now go through this list and tell me uh <clears throat> any of these qualities are being developed in you when i'm speaking to you like that problem solving skill desire to cooperate responsibility yes you know most of you <clears throat> you're typing yes you know you wanted to do any of these things don't want to listen don't want to listen back talk using foul language you want to use foul language you want to do any of these things no this time it is a no okay okay great so let me let me just sum up this so i i actually spoke to you in two different ways two different kinds of communication for the first time you said you are feeling bad and you don't want to listen to me you don't want to obey you don't want to cooperate and uh, none of these qualities are being developed for the first time and you said that you don't want to listen so these challenges are increasing and uh, uh, and uh, the life skills and qualities are decreasing for the second time you you, you said that you are feeling good and yes you said that some of these qualities are developing in you as a student and you said that you know none of you don't want to engage in any of these things no back talk or no don't want to listen so challenges reduced qualities and life skills increased 
Okay, this is what you have observed it. How did this happen? What what happened here? So this is this whatever you are seeing on the screen. This is the two different types of communication that you have just seen in the role play. Now let us understand what happened here. Okay, let us let us take the help of child psychology and let us get into the tools and let us understand what happened here. Uh, let me ask you first. What is the difference between the first set of statements and second set of statements? It is not okay to hit your friends. How do we treat our friends? Okay. No talking with your friends when the class is going on. When is the best time to discuss ideas and ask each other questions? The fundamental difference between these two set of statements is the first set of statements. These are all statements actually. This is all telling, telling and telling and telling. The second one. These are not statements. These are questions. This is asking. First, it is telling. Second, it is asking. What what is what is a big deal when we tell and when we ask? What happens? Lot of research has gone into this. You know that is why I'm I'm doing all these things with you. I just want to share this one thing. Lot of research has gone into this. You know uh, these statements were made to people, and they have measured how people respond. How people respond when you talk in a particular way, and I'm going to share this uh, result of this research uh, with you. And it it is it is found that when you tell, you know, when you tell to somebody, it creates a physiological tension in the body. The body becomes tensed. You know? It creates a physiological tension in the body, and a message goes to the brain to resist. Immediately, a message goes to the brain. Oh, 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 oh! This guy, this lady is telling. Let me resist. Brain resist. But when you ask, when you simply turn that, when you simply turn that, when you ask, it creates a physiological relaxation. That person feels relaxed, not tense, but relaxed, and a message is sent to the brain to search for an answer. To search for an answer. This is what fundamentally happens when you shift from telling to asking. When you tell, the brain resists. When you ask. brain start searching for an answer how many of you agree with me type a in the chat box a brain which is thinking is more likely to cooperate than a brain which is resisting how many of you agree with me absolutely correct correct as teachers when you want cooperation what you should do simply you know bring that resisting brain into the zone of thinking from thinking you can take to cooperation you know don't you cannot jump straight away like that from resistance to thinking thinking to cooperation how can you take that brain from resistance to thinking from thinking to cooperation you should know the tool a method and one of the tools that i have given from my toolkit is shift from telling to asking shift from telling to asking when you tell uh, out of compulsion or whatever the child might cooperate but if the ch the child might cooperate two out of 10 uh, times but when you ask uh, the child might cooperate 8 out of 10 times 8 out of 10 times the cooperation level rises uh, when you shift from telling to asking how many of you see that you know uh, i'm i'm really making a point here now just think you know um, just revisit that situation in your mind you when you are correcting a child and tell me think for yourself and tell me were you telling more or asking more when you were correcting a child okay in that situation were you telling more or asking more think for yourself and answer you would be doing two things but if you really 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 observe yourself you can easily understand you can easily figure out that you will be telling and telling and telling and telling you know, don't do that sit down how many times i told you can't you understand this for sit down this is not the right way you know your how your father uh, is uh, suffering and you know, paying the school fee why don't you understand that lot of telling and lecturing lot of telling and lecturing and defending will be going on and if and that is why children don't listen psych what psychology says that children don't listen because we tell why that's how the brain works so with your so this is where we think that we are correcting i'm coming to the correction part we think that we are correcting but the tools that we use actually intensify the problem i have taken one tool that most of you are using more telling and i have demonstrated to you how this intensify the problem you only told that you know you don't want to listen don't want to obey 
and just if you understand child psychology and you have alternative tools in your hand if you have alternative tools in your hand you can simply shift that and you can you can uh, bring um, cooperation you can get cooperation from the child even a highly indisciplined child the problem is not with the no punishment policy the problem is not with the parents and not the problem is not with any other thing the problem is with the alternative methods we as teachers we don't have specific tools if some situation happens how can i connect to the child how can i connect to the, to the child how can i communicate how can i talk to the child in this particular situation teachers don't have those specific tools that is what that is where uh, we have worked and we have come up with this uh, toolkit toolkit positive discipline toolkit and uh, how many of you how many of you really want to get your hands on this uh, toolkit how many feel that yes yes sir whatever you are talking is making sense i really want this tool sir i i'm pretty much sure that you know most of you might feeling that if you if you don't have these tools if you don't have these tools you know the same drama the same thing will be going on in your classroom same thing will be going on in your home and you know you could see the same uh, indiscipline um, happening again and again over and over now same thing will be happening yes i think by now you might have uh, realized that how many of you are ready and jump in you and you join my program and take these tools and uh, uh, walk into the classroom and uh, uh, solve the problem how many of you are ready for that let i'll just uh, just take 10 minutes uh, to share about the program then i'll give a wonderful offer to you wonderful price if you really really feel that yes this is something sensible jump in we'll journey and let us together you and me you and me not only me a group of uh, psychologists together we can solve the discipline issues the challenges that you are facing in your classroom in your home in both the situation okay great the program that i am sharing with you is this five c's okay you will have courses where you'll get all the tools whatever tools that i'm talking about you'll get in this courses the courses are the video lessons recorded video lessons there are more than 50 to 60 video lessons there okay this is one thing the second is coaching i'll tell you in a minute what this coaching is third is community fourth challenge five certificate all these th five things i'm offering to you i'm offering to you for a period of one year this is a one year subscription that i'm offering all these things that you will get it in an app a one year subscription that is what i am offering to you so let me quickly go through these courses there are five courses the first course that i am offering it to you is cooperation gaining mastery okay so from this course only i have picked up one tool called asking and i have shared this tool with you and there are there are many other tools there are different ways of asking sometimes when you ask things doesn't work you cannot ask some kinds of questions so there are many things that you can learn but what this course does is it will it will help you to gain cooperation from a child how to correct the child this is what happens when you go to this go through this course and learn these tools the tools to gain cooperation from a child you will get from this course cooperation gaining mastery this is valued at 2000 rupees okay the second course that i'm offering to you is connection building formula okay connection building formula i already told you connecting is important but there are different ways of connecting actually okay there, there are so many tools to connect there are so many situations how you can connect all the, these tools you will get here how can you connect to the child you can see that that connection happening just like that with your students and with your uh, with your own children also this you will get in this course connection building formula valued at 2000 rupees second disciplining styles uh, model okay we have not discussed on this but let me just tell you each one of you have a particular disciplining style okay here you will understand what is my style and what are the advantages and disadvantages of this style and what changes uh, i should make what is the best style what changes i can make okay this is this this program is disciplining styles model this is valued at 2000 and i'm pretty much sure that all of you agree with me that you know if you have to really establish this that so called positive discipline we need to manage and control our own emotions okay and one of the major emotion is anger so i have put together one one course where you will have specific tools based on again psychology where you can understand 
and manage your anger and child's anger okay understand and manage your anger and child's anger okay this is this is one thing okay then uh, one more course one more course uh, which is misbehavior decoding blueprint what is this what is this what what am i talking about see you know the misbehavior whatever misbehavior that might be okay whatever you are facing with your uh, students that misbehavior that you are seeing there it is just the tip of an iceberg just the tip of an iceberg it's visible on the outside but you know that misbehavior misbehavior has got a root cause actually that root cause as a belief the child has got a belief the child is believing in a particular way out of that belief the child is acting in this particular way so this action you are seeing the child is rude to you the child is lazy the child is not finishing work the child is bullying this action you are seeing that's visible but there is a deep down belief that the child is holding in the mind that is a root cause and it is difficult for us to identify that belief so this course does this okay i will give you nine nine step process where it's a blueprint where you can go through this process a child is really really angry and arrogant and fighting you can find out why the child is doing that why okay why the child is doing it and i'll give you tools to address this why then only this misbehavior vanishes or else it is it is your experience that all our entire life all the teachers will be addressing the behavior only it is not right to behave like that it should not be done that this can be punished this is not the right way you know behave yourself think about it we'll be addressing the behavior without knowing that you know the child is believing something deep within that is a root cause unless and until we understand the root cause this doesn't happen the pure psychology and this is one my wonderful course actually so this is also valued at 2000 this i'll give to you okay all the five courses though i give you these courses though i give you these courses where i'll give you specific tools all the 27 tools are there in these five courses though i give you these courses you will find it difficult for example today i told you connect before you correct now how can you connect at that situation okay and today i told you asking shift from telling to ask but when you go to the classroom you know maybe when you you might not get an idea how to shift from telling to asking or some kinds of question might not work that's where you require our our help our hand holding without without we giving without we supporting you i know that you know it is difficult for you to really implement these things and really bring results in your life in a classroom and home so that's why i put together this coaching every second and fourth friday you can meet me live you can meet me live at 7:30 pm and you can bring about your issues let us take all the tools that are there in the course try to connect and find solve the problems live you know this happens every second and fourth friday and uh, if you really want to if you don't want to share with this in the live session you can contact me one to one that support is also there 24 by 7 you know you can message me message me that this is the challenge sir i am facing how can i uh, solve this problem so we are there that support is there so this is the support that i am giving to you for one year this is valued at 10000 it is still less but i am saying this is valued at 10000 okay and 24 by 7 live chat support this also you get the third is community we have a like minded teachers and uh, this is a very much great support that you will get uh, when you are there in the group when you are there in the group a teacher might say that yes sir yes you know this tool i have used here it worked this tool i have used it did not work you know all those inputs you will get lot of ideas so like minded teachers together we will be in a community you will get access to this community called guiding lights this access you will get for one year this is 5000 so together the entire program is for one year you will get all the five courses you will get the support for next one year you will get um, access to the community and also you will get you in now and then i'll throw some challenges to inspire you to use these tools in the classroom and also certificate once you finish these five courses i'll give you a certificate all these things together is valued at uh, yeah it's certificate you will get a certificate all these things is valued at 25000 rupees okay it's for one year subscription okay valued at 25000 rupees and uh, if you go to my website you can get it for 5000 but here 
if, if here if you want to take a decision in this webinar i am going to give it to you as a webinar special offer for 199 just 199 for all these five courses for all the one year support for the live coaching calls for the community and certificate 199 if you feel that this is something you want it you know uh, jump in and um, 